There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this podcast. Welcome to this week's edition of Everything is Awesome. I am your host, Kev, and this is the show where we sit down and talk to awesome people about awesome things. Um, it's, yeah, all this timey-wimey stuff is really going to blow people's mind because I think, I think this episode, while dated in the feed probably for November of 2019, isn't going to be posted until June of 2020, and it's getting recorded in January of 2020. Uh, and this is the first time that I've like recorded in a real long while with a guest uh and and really have done this live intro with the guests since like almost a year ago i think uh so uh buckle up guys it's gonna be a bumpy ride uh we have so as i mentioned in one of my previous episodes though it might be a real long time ago since you guys listened to it um you know for for these first six months of 2020 i i'm a weird person when it comes to numbers and the meaning of a podcast and um, I, I'm, we're posting a lot of episodes for the first six months, like two to three a week, just so that we can kind of get back to where we should be in the timeline of everything is awesome. And during this time frame, I'm probably going to have a lot of repeat guests. Um, and, and one of them is going to be my guest today, uh, who, who you guys know from actual, the actual play world, which is very convenient because we're going to be sitting down and talking about PAX Unplugged. 2019 today um normally i would have a uh big old intro lined up but uh that is going to be really kind of saved for the episode that we record that's more about uh talking about uh what he does and 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 whatnot so uh so i'm not gonna blow up his spot in this episode but uh please uh ben welcome to the show from pot of love hey how's it going kev Great, great, great. It's uh, it's weird because I think the the last time, the I think every time you've been on the show before this, I was not doing those intros. Um, That's right, live. That's yeah. right. So that's the first time I got to hear you do your intro magic. It was pretty great. Well, it's pretty funny because I was thinking as you were doing it that um, everybody who does podcasts kind of when they're doing their own show switches to their own show voice so i was just thinking how fun it was to listen to you like speaking and then turning on your radio voice for the right. intro it's just it's right. it's a cool it's a cool thing um especially when you're in the business to like hear somebody else uh yeah. do their thing yeah it's it is uh it's funny when we when i sat down and, and we're already going off topic but that's okay right. um when I sat down and recorded the 10 year anniversary special of me in, in the world of podcasting, which was probably like two and a half years ago at this point, um, I was sitting down with my old producer and we were just talking normal, just like you and I were a few minutes ago. And, and he forgot <laughs> my radio voice. Okay. And so we, we were talking, he hit record and he gave me the countdown cause he, he was producing the episode. Um, and and then I just go into the welcome to this week's and then he like he like he went wide eyed. It was neat seeing his reaction in person because we were recording in the same room. Uh, it was it, yeah. So so yeah. It's it that is a fun part of podcasting that not many people I think really understand because most people are just hearing the radio voice the whole time, right? Um, which for the most part, really, and and I think as we like even now, like I, I think it's con- like it's toned down. Like I think it's just that my welcome to right i think that's that's my that's radio kev and then the rest of it i've, I've kind of like shed away a lot of the the character of kev uh from from podcasting i think i think i did i i don't know um 
maybe i i think that as you do more podcasting the longer you do it the more those two things become in sync with each other the more your like regular personality and your like radio personality they like they kind of slowly blend together but if you do like i do a bunch of different kinds of podcasts so i think that like i probably have a voice that i do when i'm doing my priest bowl show which i haven't done in a long time but like when i was doing that versus like the other shows that i do right 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 i yeah i I think that makes sense because you're gonna have a different personality when you're sitting down doing pot of love with your wife versus doing uh and and obviously being a guest is a different dynamic but being on this you know this uh rinky dink show where it's uh you know it used to be a bunch of fart jokes (laughs) and stuff Um, you know I've i've got a segue for us here because i was thinking about this um when, when are, uh, one of the ways I notice this uh, is when you listen to shows that do live episodes and then right. you like listen to their non-live and then you listen to their live episode. So a good example of that is if you listen to My Brother, My Brother and Me. And the their show is so different when you listen to their dynamic on like when they record at home versus when they're doing their live shows. Their voice, their tone, their mannerisms. Yeah. It's just a completely different energy. And um, so – that's one of the things I've noticed, like where you can really tell that people are outside their normal zone yeah. of like what they're doing with their, you're working, you're putting on like, you know, you're, you're working. putting on a you're, show. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But so that's why the reason why that's a segue is because um, I was thinking about, and I, I have to go back and listen to the recording you sent of uh, my PAX Unplugged panel, but I wonder which of my sort of voices I did during that one. I was thinking about that. You know what, and, and it's um, I feel like as being the in the audience for that, I it's very similar to like the the Ben podcaster that I know, which is is sure. being a guest on this show and and your pot of love stuff. So it, you know, it for me it didn't really seem out of character, you right. know, because and and I think like doing those panels as someone who has done panels, yeah. Um, panels tend to be more or less like like you're not necessarily performing because i've done the panels right. at, at wizard world for, and i've also done live shows at for for the philadelphia podcast festival and they're two different kids yeah. in, in the sense of like at wizard world i open up kind of the way i open up this show where i'm, I'm a little bit more bombastic but then right. i kind of settle down into you know um you know conversation kev uh whereas uh for the philadelphia podcast festival i'm kind of always quote unquote on because i i am trying to perform for right sometimes an audience of two um sometimes an audience of many who knows right but uh you know it's 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 you're more on that for when you're actually trying to entertain and i don't think panels are necessarily always like you're not necessarily there to entertain uh, as much as like maybe educate. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, but let's, we'll, we'll talk more about your panel um, sure. uh, as part of this podcast. Cause it was part of PAX Unplugged. And um, I wanted, I don't know that I've done like a PAX Unplugged recap before. Um, and it's, this was its third year, right? Yeah. Yeah. Third year. Yes. This is the third year. And you didn't do one last year. I'm trying to remember. <sighs> I don't know. I, I, I may have. Remember. Yeah, I, I, I may think. have. Well, I see, because I listen to a number of podcasts who are there. So then I hear like a bunch of, di- they all sort of bleed together, all the different sort of recaps. Yeah. And if I did something, it was, it was very low key. Probably. I mean, I don't, I don't think I did it, did the recap show with you. If I did, I, I probably did it with Mike and uh, Mike was only there for a day. So gotcha. we, we, I, I, I don't think I did because I, I didn't. I think I did more written press for that than I did audio press. And, gotcha. and this year I'm, I'm a little late doing the audio press, but I'm doing the audio press for it. Yeah. Um, and I got to say, like, for me, I want to I, I feel like, um, as always, I like to start with the positives so that um, we're not railroading something, though, that first year I didn't have anything real positive to say <laughs> about tax and plugs. Really? No, no. Yeah. So. That I, I think that so I'll say I'll, I'll put it this way. Um, PAX Unplugged 20, what 17 was the first year, yeah. correct? Uh, th- I feel like that was a colossal train wreck. Um, but from what I understand, it was also 
the first year that PAX events events were ran by Reed Expo uh, or right. Reed Pop. Reed Pop. The Reed Pop. Yeah. Um, and Reed Pop, I think either they purchased Penny Arcade or um, they or they purchased like the the expo events that Penny Arcade puts together. So. That's what it, it. Yeah, it's not that they purchased all Penny Arcade, but that they um, took over doing the expo events. So so uh, Penny Arcade got out of the PAX business essentially, or they built, or they essentially built a relationship. I don't know what the terms of their agreement is. Clearly, right. it's still very Penny Arcade oriented. But as someone that used to go to Penny Arcade, to go who used to go to PAX, you know, back in the day when it was all run by Penny Arcade, it does have a different feel to it now. You now, can tell. And is the feel better or worse than when it was? It's just different. Under- it's just different. Okay. And I'd love to say I don't want to spend too much time on this, but I'd love to kind of give you my rundown on that. So because I like, I don't know, I enjoy talking about this because. Uh, so I never went to PAX Prime or PAX West, or whichever you want to call it, uh, out west um, in Seattle. Right. But I went to the first ever PAX East and the first several PAX Easts um, when they first happened. And so PAX was still pretty in its infancy compared to now. Even though they had been not doing PAX Prime for a while, it was the first not – it was the second PAX they added. You know, it was like they, yeah. they added PAX East. And it was still very much Penny Arcade doing it, and it was still very much focused around Penny Arcade and what Penny Arcade produces, while also having, you know, a, I mean, Penny Arcade, uh, PAX was always a game con, so it was always um, a big video game expo in the expo hall, but around that, it was very much, um, so it's sort of its own its own animal. I mean, the first ever PAX, um, if you like listen and talk about PAX history, really was just the two guys who are, you know, it's uh, Jerry and um, oh, what's the other guy's name? It's uh, yeah, uh, Mike, Jerry and Mike right. um, with a bunch of Xboxes, TVs, you know, like LAN almost, almost like a LAN, glorified LAN party. You okay. know, like it was like really small and it was just sort of them doing it. Um, and so the feel of like getting together to play video games and getting together to play games, I think was at the core of what PAX was from the beginning. So that was always sort of around around the expo part. And the culture of PAX East was very – it was small. The first PAX East was so small. So like you really got to see everybody all the time and the quote-unquote cele- geek celebrities who were there um, like were just hanging out with everybody. And it was like – a real community experience and like unlike anything I'd ever been to before. Uh, And, and like it was in a pretty small venue um, before it moved to the big Boston convention center the year after that. And it was like, it was just so amazing. Like, I mean, we're talking about an event that still had concerts. It still had like lots of people. It still had big speakers, but it didn't feel big. It felt really small. And it was so centered around playing that people were just spending so much of their time playing and it was just a a total blast. And then, um, it got bigger obviously. Uh, but that culture of being around, like, like there was always the same people who were involved and, um, the Penny Arcade staff was intermingling constantly and, and other people like, um, you know, uh, Scott Kurtz were like very accessible and people would just hang out and trade Pokemon. And, uh, it was like, and, and there was also sort of an agenda to the whole con where like, you kind of like were bookmarked throughout with like the main events. There was the keynote and then there was like, you know, sort of main events and it was a big closing ceremony that everybody would go to. And that's sort of what it felt like. Now I haven't been back to PAX East in a long time. So maybe PAX East still feels a lot like that. I don't, I don't think it does from what I've heard, but I don't know. But PAX Unplugged that first year didn't feel like that at all. So it was very jarring for me because it was like, wow. um, Like you show up, it's like, you just sort of do what you're going to do. And, like I, I just felt like before there was so much clarity about what this con was and like what you did at it. And my first PAX Unplugged, I remember feeling like, wow, the, so there was a keynote, but they really didn't make a big deal out of it. And like people didn't make an effort to go to it. And I missed it. And um, I think, oh, you know, I might have made that first keynote, actually. Yeah. So I went to that first keynote the first year. It was the second year uh, keynote that I missed. It doesn't feel like a keynote anymore and it doesn't sort of set the tone for – so like the keynotes of PAX East used to like – 
they weren't like the, you know at Pax Unplugged the last uh, let's see who was it this year um you know I don't even know but two years ago it was like what, whoever the head of like uh, sort of a president of Wizard of the Coast I forget who it was and then last oh, year yeah. it was uh sort of the head of D and D um and they really talked about what they were doing so like the one I went to to the first one it, they, the whole thing was about what Wizards does and things that were coming up from wizards and like about wizards of the coast, right? Like, well, like back in PAX East, you would have like Will Wheaton come and talk about like not being a dick. And, um, right. Like you would, that was a keynote, you know, it was almost like a Ted talk for geeks. Um, like, well, I mean, Ted talks are for, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. like a, you know, that was a keynote, like, and they, it was like setting the tone for the con and the keynotes of PAX unplugged are just other panels. They're just like single speaker presentations. Um, Interesting. So anyway, that's sort of my piece on how it's – so you said is it better or worse? And I, I gave a very long-winded answer, but the short <laughs> answer is that it's – to me, it's just different. Right, and right. Pax Unplugged has very much grown on me um, since that first year. I had a good experience the first year. I remember thinking, this is great. I love this. I um, had a lot of fun. In fact, actually, it pulled me back. So the other thing is I had been away from – I didn't realize this was going to get personal, but it's getting really personal now. Mm -hmm. um, I've been away from that world for a number of years and I used to go to PAX with my ex-wife and we had some pretty significant personal stuff that happened around that. The last PAX East we had gone to, my ex-wife was very, very pregnant, like so pregnant that she had a disability pass the whole time. Um, and that led to us having a really, really crazy and really cool experience at that PAX um, where we get to hang out with the Penny Arcade people the whole time. And uh, it was just really fun. And so after I went through my, like throughout my divorce and, oh, and then I became like, you know, I got ordained and got pulled into the priest world. And then I started going through a divorce and like, I really got pulled away from my hobbies. Um, I stopped playing RPGs for a while altogether. And I just like divorce really, Divorce can suck the joy out of your life and it can right. like what people might not know is it can suck like even the things you like doing with other people can remove those things from your life, especially if you have similar friend, friend groups and stuff. And so that's what happened to me going through a divorce. And then going back to PAX Unplugged the first time, I just remembered how important all that had been to my life. And it was like a experience of like almost like a rebirth experience of like being reborn into the hobby and being reborn into the culture and into that world. And it really meant a lot to me to do that. So that is kind of where all ports open network was born because Blaine and I left that con feeling like we needed to do more stuff related to the hobby. And so, um, or to the geek culture world. And so out of that, ended up becoming all ports open network uh, uh, out of that became um, Saturday night strategist, which is the game group that I run in Pennsylvania and Drexel area. Um, so yeah, so that's anyway, that's a very long answer. And it got way more personal than I realized it was going to. Um, but I think you're right that that first year was a hot mess, but I don't think of it that way when I think back to it. Interesting because uh, like here's here's how PAX and my experience with PAX um, is way back in the day. I I used to read the the Penny Arcade um, comics and whatnot, and and that was really my only experience. I think they may have been my introduction to, and they weren't called actual play podcasts back then, but they they were my introduction to like oh playing D and D like for a live right. audience and, right. and right. record it and put it out as a podcast. And, and that like, they kicked off the idea where I told my buddies like, we should do that. And it was literally before, like before actual play podcasts were a thing. Um, but then, um, really beyond that, I never did anything with, with PAX, um, prime or PAX East or anything like that. So PAX Unplugged was my first con for them. Uh, and it went from in 2017 being my least favorite experience as far as like conventions are concerned. And, and I don't go to a ton, but I, 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 do go to a lot of the, the Philadelphia ones that, you know, um, the great right. Philadelphia comic con in Oaks wizard world at the convention center. Um, I think at that point, Keystone, 
um, Keystone would n- was not there yet. Um, Keystone is, I think, first year was 2018. So Keystone wasn't there yet. Um, the Philadelphia Podcast Festival um, and some other little, like little like independent stuff things that I and that and PAX Unplugged 2017 was the worst thing I I had gone to. Um, I, th- I think my buddy Mike was there uh, to do to to like demo his game that he was uh, creating at the time. Um, and I think like I just didn't know anybody. I I, I I knew Jeff. He was probably the only Jeff Stormer from the Party of One podcast. He was probably the only person I knew from like the world of um, of uh, you know uh, tabletop, whether it be you know board games or role playing games. Um, and like I just walked around and I I did not have a great time at all. Mm. And I could say that from 2017 to 2018 to 2019, the amount of things that I I've done each year has not really changed all that much like i won't I, i've only played a total of i think two ga- two quick games um uh in the three years that uh pax unplugged has been around a lot of it has been walking around and and stuff i would say the highlight of pax 2017 was me sitting down and demoing and play testing mission accomplished with jeff and, and some nice. other people nice um other than that like it just i don't know it felt it was not as good as the other cons it went for, but it went from being in 2017 my least favorite con to 2019 the third year probably being my favorite convention that happens in philadelphia yeah um and and that being said i don't think i, I think there was a lot of like um missteps this year um compared to last year like i think last year was i think um the layout was better last year um but i the con was actually better this year like i had more fun this year it, it, my my fun has increased each year uh but I, I, I the and i think you and i talked about this the the one day like the it just it seemed like it was like it seemed like it was so big in the sense that like oh wow i have to walk from a to b and it's a long walk yeah and there's nothing to do in between a and b yeah so it's gotten it is uh it's huge now and it it it's not a bad thing i guess it just is what it is but it's gotten so big that like it, they in some ways they improve significantly the overall like sort of layout as far as like traffic flow and like managing lines and like adding play space and uh, uh, adding stuff to do um, in that. But in order to do that and also grow at the rate that the con was growing, it made it so it had to be so big that you have to spend tons of time <laughs> moving from place to place, like and count tons of time in your schedule for moving around because it's such a big, it's just a big space now. And uh, yeah, like you said, there's like, yeah, there are stretches. Um, I guess because of the way the convention center is laid out, there's like, you have to walk. Uh, and by the end of it. Uh, okay. So, so the first, here's part of my problem. The first, this is just on me. The first day on Friday, I didn't go in the main entrance. Right. In fact, actually, I don't think I went in the main entrance until Sunday. So I never became oriented to how the con was really supposed to be set up, like how you ex- were supposed to experience it from the main entrance. So I never really experienced that, which made me kind of disoriented the entire time. I thought that the signage could have been better. I thought they could have yeah. had more signs and it could be more clear and it could be more, uh, you know, um, what do they call them? Enforcers around that kind of like point you in the right direction. There's a, there was a decent amount in certain spots, but as you indicated, there was like a huge stretch of w- hallway walking to get from like the one end of the exhibitor hall or like the play space uh, at the end of the exhibitor hall where like open gamings were huge stretch of walking between that and like the like main entrance. And just, there was just nothing along that. It's just like a wasteland of right. stuff. Now, what I didn't really click in my head till Sunday is that that huge stretch of hallway, if you were just on the other side of the wall, you would have been in the exhibitor hall and in the main space the entire time until you get all the way to the very end and then you go down the escalators and you're at the main entrance. And that's how huge that massive exhibitor hall was. 
Right. But and and here my counter to that though is and maybe I would say <sighs> Wizard World has actually like they they have shrunken a little bit. I think they take up less space in the convention center now. Um but to that end, every year that I've gone to Wizard World and Keystone, I like I I'm almost positive like I definitely do hallway walking. Um that way I'm just not in the noise. It just it felt like a vast opens it is it, it, it i feel like the layout could be tweaked a little bit um to go to to do because i didn't feel that last year at pax unplugged at pax yeah. Unplugged 2018 yeah so i feel like there's some there's something that they well, can do to like kind of work in the middle of those whatever 2018 and 2019 had to offer well also part of that is that well, you actually might know more about this than I do. So the – or you pro- and you probably do for going to your other cons. But didn't they just open that new entrance on Broad Street altogether? Isn't that like a brand new entrance in the convention center? Um, no, but I think I think it's being enforced by the convention center to be used as the main entrance now. Okay. Wizard World has been doing that for the last two or three years okay. um, and, may- and maybe longer. Keystone and Pax and Plug have previously you've been able to take the train uh into Jefferson yeah. and just je- yeah I think it's Jefferson and yeah. just walk your walk through there up to the escalator and go in that I guess it's the back entrance right uh, um, but that's where the grand foyer is or whatever right so I actually I've so I've lived in Philly my whole area most of, almost my whole life and I've been to many things there including like car shows um, previous cons, Wizard World in the past, you know, different things there, right? Uh, in fact, my diocese for my Episcopal Church ha- had a general had its diocese as a convention there in the past, and like literally, and I felt so stupid because literally, I didn't even know there was that Broad Street entrance because, I mean, you take the train into Jefferson Station right. and you go up into the Grand Ballroom, and I thought that's how you got into the freaking thing, and like I knew there were those other side entrances, but I didn't know there was some. Broad Street entrance, like main entrance, I had no idea. Honestly, I had no idea. I, and and to be honest, neither did I. Like I knew it this year, but but right. um, I want to say this year, uh, or I guess twenty nineteen Wizard World. I want to say even that allowed you to uh, use the 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 Jefferson Street or the Jefferson Hard Rock entrance. You know, yeah. Um, but this year when i was trying to go in there I, I couldn't and i was talking to mike and i was like where the hell is this entrance and he was like it's by the big paintbrush i was like what the hell are you talking about the yeah. big paint what does that like, mean big paintbrush yeah and he's like it's the same entrance it's been every year i'm like i don't know what you're talking about i always come in from this entrance and like i finally found it you know that by on broad street right. and and it is actually um if as someone who drives there it's actually more convenient because there's a nice little lot that's super cheap both on all three days or four days of the con, depending on what con it is. Um, and uh, so, so you can get cheap parking, which is hard to do on those days, on those weekends for the convention. Um, and, uh, and and it's a quick walk from that parking lot too, to that yeah. project entrance. Oh yeah, I totally agree. So once you told me about it, I parked in that, in that lot, like on Sunday when I needed to book there from church, I parked in that lot you told me about, and it was just so convenient. You're like right there, you're like right next to it, and you walk in, and you're right in that main entrance. So that I mean, it was nice once I realized that was there. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's I discovered that at Wizard World this past, gotcha. um, or maybe maybe it was Keystone. I forget. I think uh, it doesn't matter. I discovered it this in 2019, sure. and and I just did it every the two days that I was there for for uh, Pax Unplugged, um, which is a good segue to maybe go into. Well, so all right, before we segue, let's. I don't know if this will actually turn into a commercial break, but let's take a quick break because I have uh, dogs barking right now and everyone's trying to sleep. So uh, let's take a quick break, and we'll be back on the other end to kind of maybe get your like official thoughts on like the good and the bad and then we'll recap the three days welcome to the mid-roll super friends thank you all for listening uh and a big thanks to ben wallace for hopping on this week's episode of everything is awesome we recorded this back in january uh but we are posting it now and ahead of schedule technically uh i feel a little personally behind but we did predict posting this in june when i uh recorded this with ben from january uh so thanks to him uh check out pot of love 
Uh, it's the podcast on the All Ports Open Podcast Network. It's a great podcast. Uh, and if you listen to one of the most recent episodes, you may hear a familiar voice somewhere in the episode. Uh, going by the name of M. Michael Mary, maybe. I don't know. Check it out. Uh, I had a lot of fun um, doing some improv with Ben and Sean uh, for the Pot of Love podcast and injecting my character into the world of Charity Maine. Um, it's, it was really exciting, really fun. Shout out to uh, our Patreon backers, Mike D'Angelo and uh, Priest Pulse. Thank you guys for supporting us on Patreon. Uh, you can find us on patreon.com slash that nerdy kev. And uh, if you're also looking for other ways to support us, you can go to ko-fi.com slash that nerdy kev. Um, as we've mentioned in the previous episode, any money that we raise through this podcast or my itch.io store um, beyond what I'm using to support creators right now um, will be uh, initially going to um, funds to help with COVID-19 relief. Um, so uh, if, if you have extra coin, which I know is far and few between right now, um, feel free to support us knowing that it's going to go to other content creators uh, and businesses that are in need during these tough, tough times. Of course, uh, if you are in a position where you can afford to support the creators that you follow, please do so. Uh, I don't, I do not need that right now. Um, so please, uh, support other creators, uh, support local businesses where you can. Uh, that's all I have for the mid roll, uh, you know, this week. And I don't have, I have too much to say. I don't want to keep you here. So let's get back to, uh, our conversation with Ben about PAX 20. Well, PAX Unplugged 2019, right here on awesomepodcast.com. All right, welcome back to Everything is Awesome. Uh, if you're just joining us in the middle of this show, that's you don't know how podcasts work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's not a thing that happens. It's, it's funny because I've been, to go off topic briefly, like I've been doing this for a long time. And the the way like we always did it in in 2007, even though the same concept was there. Like you were downloading a podcast. Why would you drop it in the middle of it? It was all really radio based training. Like, Oh, we're going to take a break and then we're going to, you know, come back and, and reintroduce ourselves, you right. know, in case someone's just joining in for the first time, they need to know your name. Um, and that's why that's like funny. it's, it's, uh, I get crap. Not, not so much anymore, but in the beginning, a lot of people would be like, why do you always, every single episode you're introducing, the show and you're and you're introducing yourself and it all it goes back to that stan lee kind of mindset of like well everyone's comic book is their first comic book and and same thing with with you know podcast everyone's podcast is their you know it's someone's first podcast that's true whether, so so it's a you know it's and i think it's more common sense now to like oh yeah i'm going to introduce the show and myself every single time right uh, because you might not know who i am anyway um so yeah so so well and i guess we don't even really need to get into like your general thought it sounds like you you for the most part have enjoyed pax the whole time yeah so so i guess uh, yeah just to say i enjoyed the last two years a lot um and i i guess i i guess i enjoyed this year's the most last year was really fun too and again they were just sort of different and i did different things at them so every year has been a different PAX for me. Like it's been very, very different right. every year. Um, but they've all been positive experience. So in general, I had a lot of fun again this year at PAX. I, I, I got to experience a lot of really cool things and uh, with really cool people. So yeah, it was, it was great. And I think 2018 really for me at least, because I would say I didn't really hang out with that many. I mean, I guess I hung out with you. I think I hung out with you the first day last uh, in 2018 as yeah, well. Friday. Yep. Um, and then Sunday was with my kid and with Mike a little bit, but generally speaking, like I, I don't know that it was, it was much different, like me doing anything wise than 2017 was. Okay. Um, but it was definitely, it was better. It was definitely run better. I had a better time. It seemed like there was more local people doing things. Um, which that, that was my biggest complaint of 2017. It felt like virtually no Philadelphia creators were, were at the table to play as far as like panelists and, 
um, and content creators were concerned. Like it just, it seems very like, wow, you're in Philadelphia with a very large, you know, role-playing slash tabletop presence. Like why aren't you utilizing it? Um, and it was, so that was big. It was like a 180 in 2018. And then this year I actually, I did a little bit more and I hung out with more people and, um, I think I just had a better time. Well, um, one more comment then about, about related to that specifically and the size issue we're talking about from my experience this year is that I knew tons of people. I can't even tell you how many people that I know at this PAX and like that. I like, oh, it's crazy how many people I knew this time, especially because I don't know, 20 some people or more. I had a text chain, uh, related to our, our Saturday night strategist game club, um, in Delco of like 20 some people on my phone that was going the whole time. And plus I knew everyone I know from like actual play world, everyone I know online who was there, everyone I know in the Philly area who isn't part of the SNS sort of world, like um, all the APON connections, just all kinds of stuff. Uh, like just general friends I have in the area who were there. I, I can't even tell you how many people I knew. It was, it was nuts when I really stopped to think about it on Friday of PAX unplugged this year, Blaine and I were there together and saw virtually nobody that we knew the whole day because it was just so freaking big at that point. And it was right. almost impossible to coordinate with people. So like yeah. this time, even though we knew so many people, we did way less sort of coordinated time and together time as, as last year. Right. I, I did feel like that there was like, there was no time to say, Hey, let's go grab a bite to eat. Like yeah. there was la the, the year before. Absolutely. Um, but, um, I, and you know, I will, you know, comment. Um, I saw a discussion about cons. Um, it was probably right after PAX unplugged. Um, and someone was on Twitter asking about like, what convention should they go to, uh, in 2020? And, um, like, you know, obviously the big one, Gen Con was brought up. I think big bad con was brought up and, and PAX Unplug was uh, brought up and, uh, uh, past guest of the show, James D'Amato, uh, he actually, he like, he was talking about it and, and he, he actually, he, his, I don't think uh, he was at PAX Unplugged in 2017 and I don't think he's been back since. And his, his complaint about, about it is that if you don't know anybody, it's not a fun experience. And I think that's so true because I think that was my, my experience in 2017. And in 2018, the, I said, it was like the only, the only way I will go is if I get a press pass, because I will not pay for an experience I had no fun at. Right. Um, and, and that quickly changed in, in 2019 where I was more than willing to pay if I had to pay to, to go. I don't know if I would have gotten a three day pass, but I definitely was like, I was uh, 2018 flipped me, but I do think it, it is important to have, cause you'll, we can attest to the 2018 packs unplugged. Like I hung out with you guys on Friday and we didn't, I don't think we played anything. We, we hung out, we talked to Jacob, we talked, you did your interview with, um, um, the name is escaping me in 2018. Oh, in 2018 um, with Nikki. Nikki, yes. Yeah. Um, and then and then we went and grabbed lunch, and then I think maybe we went went back and did a few more things. And then, and then oh, we did play though. We played uh, Starcross on Friday. Oh, you're right. Yeah, we awesome. did. Yeah, we did. We did do that. So that, and that and and that well, we could have done that anywhere. <laughs> you know exactly, just, exactly. Yeah. And that's something that I will say about what I really liked enjoyed about 2019 packs is that. Um, even though I was there as part of the press, I, I really like, I hung out with Zach for a little bit. I hung out with you. Um, I didn't get to see Jeff, which was a bummer, but, and then on Sunday I hung out with, with my son and, 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 to, and I think I, I don't think we really hung out much on Sunday, but you know, I, 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 I um, there was no agenda to like, Oh, let me sit down and record episode 150 or let me sit down and record a pie. Like there was zero agenda for me. Like I was just there to have a good time and hang out with people. And that was yeah. like so much fun. And like part of like my 2020 agenda is to make more time for friends in that way. Where like, Oh, let's like not hang out and just record a podcast. Like let's hang out to hang out. Right. Um, but anyway, so pack some plugs is the three days. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can comment on Friday and Sunday because, as as per usual, I I you know kind of stayed home on Saturday. Um, 
but so Friday, what did Friday, we, I was trying to remember, what did we even do on Friday? <laughs> so <laughs> I can't yeah, remember. <laughs> so Friday, um, you got there later than I did. Um, right. Cause you guys, you guys, your guys, they started later. Yeah. Um, I, I got there and I, I thought the con opened at like, I guess I thought it opened at 10 or maybe nine or something like that because I got there and like, I got right in, I got through security, um, and I start walking the floor and like, no one's on the floor. I'm like, all right, well, I guess they're opening in like a half hour or something like that. And like, I was there super early, like way <laughs> earlier. And, and like, people were giving me like a strange look. Cause I was walking on like the tournament floor, that side of, oh, the, okay. of the, the hall. Yeah. Yeah. And I had a press pass on. So like, no one was questioning it. That was like, thank right. God I had the press pass. Cause no one was like stopping me, but I'm like, this is fucking, like, everyone's lined up. What the hell is going on right now? And little did I know, I just wasn't supposed to be on the floor like at That's all. Funny. And uh, so, so I quickly backtracked, went up and got a coffee and then, um, and saw that, you know, uh, Zach was there and, uh, you know, I just, I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to try to find him in this sea of people. And I went into the expo hall because it would open up and I was literally just standing there. And uh, we we bumped into each other as he was walking into the expo hall. So my, my Friday started off like bewildered the fact that I, I was there far too early. And then I just it was uh, Zach was there with uh, with his producer, Zach B and their friend. Um, I forget his name, but uh, with one of their friends as well. And um, and we just walked the floor for a little while and then. I really did want to try to sit down and play a game with, with Zach. Cause I have yet to do that, but he wanted to, my, my problem is if you're going to play like a role-playing game there, you have to get in line like an hour early. You have to be willing to devote four hours to play a game. And I just wasn't ready to do that. Especially as someone who's not fully comfortable with their role-playing ability, you know, I, I cause I don't play that often. Um, I'm more of a fan than I am an actual like I, I don't feel I don't feel like I'm actually part of the community because I, I I really don't play that often. I just I'm kind of like a I I am an onlooker of that community. So I, so I was really nervous about even sitting down to play a game in like that kind of environment anyway. And you had just gotten there as he was heading right. off to get get in line, and I had to get you that the the Zoom so that oh you right could record. I I don't know. I guess it was Saturday, it was Saturday. recording. Yep. So I, you know, I told him, I was like, I'll, I'll try to get down there. I just don't know how long I'm, I'm going to be looking for Ben. So my, I think one of the biggest like bummers of, of PAX for me was not being able to sit down and play a game with, with Zach. Um, but uh, I, I did catch up with you and Blaine and your other friends. Yeah, Jeremy. Who I, yes, I was say I'll call Star Wars dad because I forget his. Yeah. I forget <laughs> yeah so name. Jeremy, our friend Jeremy, he he came last year on Sunday with his kids, but this year he was able to come for all three days. So he stayed with Blaine and uh, went and was there with us pretty much all three days. Yeah, and, and that was meeting up with you guys. We so let me back up because when we when Zach and I were walking around, um, we the first thing we did is we went to the together is it together studios for illamat uh yeah i think that's right uh we went to that booth and we got like um we talked to uh i, I, I don't know if they're married but um they are kenny baker's wife yes this is, they're a married couple yep and i i'm kenny baker i say that name and that really sounds like someone who played a, a character in star wars <laughs> uh i feel like that's an actor as well but um, we talked to his wife and she like went through uh, Illimat with us and I was like, oh man, I might be buying this even though like I, like I, my funds were like exceptionally low cause I was, uh, I had just gotten back from Disney. Yeah. Uh, but we got a quick demo of that. Uh, we ch- kind of glanced at the adventure zone game. I but did demo like a- that by the way. Oh, okay. Well, we'll have to talk about that cause I did not get to demo it. Um, I just got to like kind of, well, maybe I. Yeah, I don't think we, I think I just got like a demo. I think when I was with you when we just like got the demo, but I didn't actually play it. We, we just, that's what I did. Yeah. That's, that's okay. all I did. I okay. was disappointed by what we saw. I didn't well, think it felt very inspired at all. Actually. It was oh, interesting. We'll get to that in a second then. Yeah, sure. Um, but then, so I put a pin in the Illimat thing, which I instantly went and bought after I split with Zach anyway, but Illimat's uh, amazing. You did a good thing by buying it. 
Yeah, I I haven't sat down to play it yet because I you know I I buy all these games and I'm the old like Jen, my fiance. She's very classic cardboard. Like she doesn't gotcha. she thinks all the other games are silly. She's like I don't have time for that. See, but Illimat is a trick taking game, so I think that like people who like classic cardboard games, I would think would like Illimat because I mean it's just a trick taking game. I, I would like to sit down and play it a few times and get like a handle on how to play it before yeah. I introduce it to the family. Sure. sure. Um, then we went and checked out uh, Weave, uh, the the Zacks and I, and we just got like a quick like explanation of what it was. So funny. It, I also played that. Did you? You weren't with us when we played, yes. were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We oh, didn't okay. play. I, I didn't play it with the Zacks. I played it with you. Oh, okay. Um, I'm jumping the gun. Sorry. Go ahead. But I was super intrigued by that. But then we just ended up walking around, I think, for a bit, and then I, and then I met up with you. Um, and and how was your? How was getting in on? on day one was it you, you you guys came in through the old entrance right yeah so it's so funny by the time we got there they had opened the old entrance so we get to skip the line because we went and we got in that massive massive line all the way around like we walked like multiple almost i felt like we were walking multiple times around the whole building uh but we like you know we walked really far we said we could have walked the other way around the square around the block and we would have gotten there faster but when we got to the back of the line somebody goes Oh, we're opening up, uh, you know, the other entrance. And we looked at each other and we're like, is it faster for us to do that? And we said, well, let's just do it. And I'm glad we did because we went there. And it's a little bit of a walk, but we went there and we went right in. No problem. It, it is because I remember last year's PAX Unplugged, I was texting you when I first got there, I think on Friday. And I was like, I because I was lost it to where the entrance was. And and I, I I ended up walking one one end, and then I ended up having to walk all the way to that. I, I guess what is considered the back entrance now. Right, it um, is, yeah. Because and I think I remember like you were saying, yeah, Mel was like, wasn't she doing the same thing on that yes. Friday or whatever? Yes. <laughs> like, yes, just walking around Philly trying to get into packs. Yep. Um, but yeah, I think I met up with you pretty much like as soon as you got there. I, oh yeah, it was basically immediately. So we got right. there. Now, so you've refreshed my memory because I couldn't remember what we did on Friday. But yeah, we got there, and the first thing I did was well, we, we kind of talked, we kind of looked around, we saw that Adventure Zone uh, game, we saw a couple other things, and then we ran into, we went over to Fog of Love, so I could talk to Jacob. That's when I got into like a conversation with Jacob Jaskoff, and you guys sort of peeled off and went and checked yeah. something else out. Yeah, we so you got so so we yeah, we did walk around a little bit and then and and then you when we got to the fog of love table so you could say hi to Jacob. Um we sat we we stood there for a little while and then we were all like maybe we should go and then I heard you say like you, you guys were getting ready to end your conversation. I was like, let's just wait, he's almost done. And then the conversation yeah. kept on going and I was like, guys, we should probably just go. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And a couple of times I almost said, like, you guys go ahead. Like, go, you know, go yeah. ahead. Uh, but I yeah, it was a really intense conversation. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and we just went and we actually uh, I think there was like a Pathfinder thing that Jeremy wanted to look at. Um, it was something, maybe it wasn't Pathfinder, but it was something that was uh, might have been from Pathfinder 2.0. Um, it might have been what it was. Maybe it was it was across from where the the Together Studios uh, table okay. was, where and because I was like, that's when I was like, just kind of curiously glancing again at the adventures and everything. Again, there was a very long line there. Um, and then I think while we, we were, I think we we all moseyed down to the Illimat side, and that's when I bought Illimat. I was just like, I'm not, I can't not buy it. So I bought that. That I got the, the the crane wife expansion and I got the pin all for like a pretty good. I think I paid like forty five dollars for everything. It was a really good deal um, to get all, all all the stuff that they were offering in the package. Um, and then we walked around a little bit more, like just in that aisle waiting for you. And then uh, and then you came down and that's when we did like the. I wouldn't even really call. It, I I guess it was a demo. We just they, we were shown the Adventure Zone game right. and and to me it's like. See, I'm, I, I'm, and I don't know if I missed the boat on getting it or not, but I would, I'm interested in that game because it seems like a great way to introduce role playing to somebody, especially like a kid. Okay. Um, because it's, it's, it seems like there's some structure to it. Um, there's obviously like a board and like cards and like stuff to look at. And I think that's very helpful for people that, and I'm speaking for myself as well, that are very like shy and, um, like timid about entering the the world of role playing and, sure, and have sure. very little experience. Sure, yeah. I mean, as somebody that like is, yeah, th- that's uh, obviously I'm coming at it at a very different angle. So I came into it expecting kind of like a creative, 
you know, game, board game slash card game. And uh, because they're really good game designers, Illumat's awesome. Um, and, uh, you know, he de- designed, um, what is it called? Eberron. And so I was just like, this is going to be great. And I love the Adventure Zone. And I was just like, eh, it just seemed uninspired to me. Um, it, it just wasn't, it, I didn't see anything exciting in it. Um, it's something that I, I definitely want to check out for sure. Uh, but I, I do see your, it does seem like, I think if you're like looking at, and I don't really know like the, the, I'm not really good with game designers. So I don't really know like the whole design aspect from together studios and, and Ken Baker and whatnot, but I do know the adventure zone guys. And honestly, truth be told, like as much as the, the, the this is obviously that game is based off the balance arc, right. as much as I love that balance arc. And as much as I think I like those characters more than anything else they've done so far. Um, and I'm finally caught up on that show. Uh, honestly, like I, I have a more emotional like response to the amnesty characters than I did the balance characters. Wow. Um, I, I would love to see them do something with that because I think that it would at least like be more emotional for me, I guess. I don't know, but yeah. I do I, I, the, the, the adventure zone game. I'm curious to try out because I feel like it could be good for like first timers and whatnot. And then, um, and then I think really the only thing I, the only other thing I did on Friday with you guys was check out, um, besides walking after we, after we did the weave thing, walking around just to get an idea of where the theaters were. Uh, that was like a good 20 minute ordeal, uh, was, um, uh, we played weave, uh, and that was, that was fun. That was, I like, I like that experience a lot. Yeah. Weave was really good. I still have the app installed on my phone. Uh, I want to play Weave more, and I don't remember if Blaine, you know, Blaine and I haven't talked about it since since PAX. I, I thought he got it, but oh, interesting. I, maybe he didn't. I, I but I, I need to play what? that game again. He talked about getting it. What's interesting is it seems like you can play it for free on that app digitally. Oh, um, I don't know if it's like I haven't really tested it out to see if it's the same cards they give you every single time, uh, or if it's random. But uh, so you don't necessarily get to pick your cards or actually have to scan a physical card. Um, And it might even be like, oh, every time you do a story, it's always going to be whatever this card is. I I haven't really tested it out beyond creating an adventure and a character, but you could probably do some like very basic storytelling through Weave and their different scenarios and stuff without actually picking up the game. But you won't have the dice. Uh, which the dice, my, my app had the dice built in virtual dice. So that didn't even seem like a deal breaker. Um, I just think you get more, I think you get a better experience if you actually buy the the game, because then you have a little bit more randomness to the cards, I think. And I think there's more cards. Yeah. I, I really want to play more of that game. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Like we did, we did one of the like adventures that I guess comes with the game. It was about goblins. Yes, yes. Well, so so all from, from what I remember that game, there's like five scenarios or five settings. I'm sorry, right. five settings, um, and goblins is one of them. Right. But like the stories you can tell through that goblin setting are there's a lot of different stories you can tell. Like you don't have to be. I think we did like a maze. Like we were in right. a maze trying to trying to get a I don't know a MacGuffin. We were trying to get something. Right. And and. That was just like what that dude was running for everybody so that he could just tell the same story. Well, a similar right. story every single time and just have, have it almost memorized. Um, I, it was, it was interesting. It was, it was, and I'm super intrigued by it and I, I do want to pick it up. It is like at least that weekend. And I think I checked a few more times up until Christmas, it was sold out on their website. Oh, okay. So, um, I, I haven't been able to pick it up yet, but that's, it, it, it's definitely on my radar to pick up. Yeah. But, what I'm curious about is like, what other, what other kinds of stories, what kind of storytelling, what kinds of games you can use it for? Yeah, it's well. And the, so I also read, um, I think I got a press release about it. They're also coming out with weave plus, which oh. allows you to do like, it's a paid app, but allows you to do some more customized, I think settings oh, and stuff, Okay, which just sounds pretty interesting. And, and, and something that I know Zach was interested in and being able to write his own content for it. Right. Right. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a cool little, it's a, again, it's, it's something that I think that like you could get people who aren't necessarily, um, experienced role players it's something that you can get them to play without really much of a fuss 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, but my Friday pretty much I, like my Friday kind of ended right around there. You know, we, we went, I think you guys signed up to do Pathfinder and then I, and then we like walked the floor to, to see where the, the theaters were. And then I think I kind of bounced after that. Um, maybe I was like, I think maybe I was trying to catch up with Jeff, but I couldn't find him before I left. Yeah, that sounds and about then, right because that's because Blaine and I then went to a panel. So, so what was the, we, we've, we've, uh, somehow in the beginning of this, I didn't think we would be able to hit an hour <laughs> talking about PAX Unplugged. And now we're on uh, Friday still. So we're still on Friday. <laughs> so, so, uh, give me, you know, so give me like a quick like synopsis of like what the rest of Friday and Saturday was for you. And yeah. Then, so and we'll we'll, it'll be Sunday fast. Up. It'll be fast because I, I really didn't feel like I didn't do that much else. So, because, so Friday, I, what's so funny. I don't think I went to any of the stuff that I had put on my schedule for friday no i don't think i went to i didn't any do of any of my scheduled stuff yeah. i had all these grand plans i did nothing so we went blaine and i went to the uh 230 panel in the mothman theater it was D D presents new show uh so it was chris perkins and um some other people like half of the like anna prosser um from waffle crew um like so it was like half the waffle crew half new people and they were announcing the new show they're doing. So they're doing like this new thing called D&D Presents. Uh, and their new like stream shows will be under that umbrella. And so this is the first of potentially multiple new shows. And um, so they were just sort of like, it was just a panel about that show. They previewed their characters. It was really fun. It was in the Mothman Theater, which is what I was going to be in for our panel on Sunday. So I wanted to check it out. It was wickedly intimidating because it was this massive theater. And I just was like, holy crap, what is happening? Um, this is the real deal. Um, but yeah, so that's what we did. Uh, and then we were hungry because we hadn't eaten yet at that point, And that was like three 30. So we like knew we needed to get something to eat. So we ran over to the, uh, to Reading terminal and got some food and then we came back and we went and played Pathfinder 2.0. And that was my first time playing Pathfinder 2.0. That uh that game is is good. It's Pathfinder but I mean, I'm trying to think of how to describe this. I haven't really been into Pathfinder since fifth edition came out. And even before then, I mean when third edition came out, I played third edition when D D. When fourth edition D D came out. I played fourth edition D and D and then I played a little bit of Pathfinder. Um, and then when fifth edition D and D came out, I played fifth edition D and D. Uh, I didn't. So I played some Pathfinder, especially because I had friends who really didn't like fourth edition or after fourth edition sort of stopped being popular or had gone away. And fifth edition was starting. We kind of switched over to Pathfinder. Um, Pathfinder 2.0 is very different and it just like, let's just say it's scratch and itch. I don't have, it's just not like it's, it was fine. It was fun. It's a good system, but it didn't present anything to me that would make me leave the systems I'm already playing for role-playing games to go to Pathfinder. Like I have no, if I was in a group that was doing it fine. Um, there was some good ideas in it. I think it creatively fine. Um, I think it's ironically feels a little bit like fourth edition for Pathfinder. Like that is some fourth edition elements in when it's funny because Pathfinder was created to subvert fourth edition. But um, <laughs> so there's like a little bit of an irony there. Uh, but yeah, it was fine. People are so people, Pathfinder fans are so gung ho about that. And I'm so ambivalent about it. I just really it does not intersect with my life at all. I just don't care. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know much about Pathfinder one or two. Uh, it's, I mean, I again, my my experience playing is very limited. So, and and right now, like I'm in a uh, like a every other month campaign that we that we're playing fourth edition. That I'm I'm desperately trying to get the G, the DM to convert to five A. Oh yeah, I I could luck to you on that. I hope you do. He, he he doesn't want to budge which is fine which is fine uh, i just i'm trying to the, convince him like dude it's going to be you you dm in a 5e style so so let's just have the players have those mechanics it's right it's infuriating um but we have a good time playing so that's all that matters um anyway go ahead uh, yeah so we so we play, no it's fine so we played pathfinder 2.0 and then and then um 
my wife got there. So Mel and I, and we, we kind of, I, I try to remember what we did. I guess we, we, it was almost, the expo hall was almost closed. So we didn't really look at that. Um, and honestly, I do not remember what we did between then and 830. I don't remember if we played something like in the game library or if we just hung out. I honestly don't remember. But at 830, we went to the only thing that I went to on my schedule for the whole day, which was playing with terror, uh, character horror, and player safety with a bunch of really great game desires that I like, like game desires, uh, designers that I like, like Meg Baker and Stephen Dewey um, and others. And we stayed for the first 20 minutes of that, and then we were exhausted and went home. So that was sort of our Friday. Um, I did catch just briefly a little bit of the extreme cardboard wrestling. So I could see Jeff's ridiculous outfit. Um, Oh yeah. Yeah. I I stopped. We stopped in there just to, you know, we needed to see it (laughs) and we did. So yeah. Yeah. I do. I wish that I I had time to come back for that, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I would say like not being able to play games with, with Zach from heart points and missing both of Jeff's panels like that. They were like the, the bummers of PAX and play for me, not being able to catch that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So Saturday is a blur for me. Um, (laughs) uh, We, the first thing I remember doing is interviewing Jacob Jaskoff at, uh, we, I guess we, we, we checked out the expo hall. Um, I did demo some other games in the expo hall, none of which are like really standing out in my mind right now. Again, it was just like kind of a blur. Um, and we, uh, but we interviewed Jacob Jaskoff as planned and got to do, so the, I guess the highlight of this pack for me, other than our panel on Sunday was that, um, not only did we interview Jacob again, the creator of fog of love, but we got to have an, a, a secret demo secret is not the right word, but a demo of his next game that he's working on. And mm-hmm. uh, I still have the, I mean, maybe you've heard the interview because you're the one that had the audio, but we, um, we, Oh, I guess you wouldn't have got to hear it. We didn't record us playing the game. No. Yeah. I remember, I guess he didn't want you to record it because there's a lot of things that might change. Yes. It's definitely, it's definitely still in development. And there was a lot of stuff about it that moving pieces and he was still working on a lot of the details like as we were there. Um, But let's see, what can I say about it? It is a game where you play four people. It's sort of like fog of love, but the party game for four people. Interesting. That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. And, and like, so it's very different market. It's market is actually more broad than fog of love, fog of love. Um, is a pretty big box. Uh, it's, um, you know, it, it has a really great unboxing that teaches you how to play, but you got to have to learn the rules and like, it takes a while to play. Um, and it's got a lot of detail And this game is definitely more of like, you're a couple, you have another couple over for dinner. Um, you guys break this game out and, um, each of you plays like one person. You're both, both sort of sides, let's say, are, are sharing a person they're playing. And one of you is playing the conscious mind and one of you is playing the subconscious mind. And you are uh, in a relationship with this other person being played by two people. And uh, you're just making pretty simple choices um, like based on like subconscious and conscious desires. And uh, it's really fun and we really enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to like when we can say more about it and when like people learn more about it. So, and who knows by the time you're hearing this, there may be more news about it that's out there. Um, right. Right. So yes, yeah, so that was sort of the highlight of that day. And then we, we got something to eat with our group. So that's when we actually had scheduled like a big meal at Iron Hill brewery, which is like kind of a mistake. I mean, it took, they, they did such a bad job at Iron Hill. It took so many hours to eat. It took our entire afternoon, um, for a party. And, but we got to hang out with our, uh, friends from Saturday night strategists and Delco, um, who were all there. And so that was nice. And then, um, the next thing I did personally, and then I left my group, uh, I left Mel, um, rejoined with her again. Um, what did we do? So the, I guess the next thing we did was we went to Jeff's panel, the shared language of pro wrestling and tabletop RPGs. 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm bummed that I missed that too. That that seemed like a great panel. That's both my interests. Yes, I know. I know it's super up your alley. You would have loved it. It was um, Ophidian the Cobra was one of the panelists, and so he which was... is he's a great dude. I had him on my show for a live show at uh, at uh, Malcolm Comics and Coffee House. He's a very cool dude. Right. So you experience him in full action because that's like my understanding oh, yeah. is he's that all the time. Oh my god. He well he he is um he, he's one of the the few wrestlers out there that are like he kayfabes it like he's right. he's in character all the time. He uh he gave me a big old uh uh wrestling chop across the chest during our uh my live show with him. Wow. Uh, and and he, I told him he's like do you want me to hold back? I was like no, don't hold back. And he apparently held back because he said I would have killed you. I was like that's fine man. It, it was it felt good. I I love I love wrestling so much. Like both, I don't really watch it anymore. I love the act of actually wrestling. So, like to participate in in, in wrestling as simple as getting chopped by somebody was like that. When, when that happened, I was like, man, I'm I got the itch. I want to get in the ring again. Yeah, but yeah. yeah he, moral of the story: he's a good dude. Yeah, yeah, and it was really fun. And then we just um we all met back up with all of our group in the uh like game you know the area where you can play games from the game library. And played a bunch of fun games. Um, I had bought one of those. Um, we bought Saturday Night Strategist, one of those, uh, what are they called? Like booster boxes, which is random games. Yes, yes, yes. And we opened that up. Uh, we played this word game we got in it called Kerflip. It's like yeah. a really simple word game that we <laughs> that, you know. Uh, we played that real quick. Uh, we played. I played Sheriff of Nottingham. Drank a ton of... Uh, of um root beer from the like you know like root beer stand thing that's there yeah. uh yeah and that was my my saturday yeah that was my saturday and um um may have also at different times saturday evening managed to have some adult beverage um in the mix so that also uh happened so nice uh nice. yeah it was we had a good time it was a really it was a really fun evening then because that unlike friday i know i complained about not seeing people saturday night we all met up in the game library and i got to see like all my people at the same time that were there cool. so cool, cool, cool um yeah yeah we got i on sunday i got one of those game boxes where you got four games and and i forget what the big one was the big one was it was it's such an intense game like it was it looked like it would be fun to play Oh, God, I wish I remember what it was, but like n- I, no one in my house would ever play it. Um, it was like a 13 and plus game. So it's Jen would never play it with me. It was, it was only uh, along the lines of risk, but like way more high fantasy. Like there was like a giant dragon token of some sort in there. Um, so we ended up for my, for my son's Cub Scouts, we ended up donating it to the toys for tots there um because no one was ever going to play it in this house but um we got and we haven't opened it yet but we we got meteor which is like a kid's game um we got this like uh weird like te- i think it's called temple something another we just played that the other day that's an interesting game and then we, and i and i can't see the title of it but we got this other game it's a two-player game that seems like it's a story-based card game um about samurais oh. of some sort so cool. i'm really interested to play that one too nice Nice. Um, but yeah, that was, yeah, again, I wasn't there Saturday, but right. that, so my, my Sunday started with, uh, with my son and I getting there. Um, and, uh, that's, that, that's always my, like, that's what I really enjoy about PAX Unplugged is that like my son and I, I think next year, I think at least me and the two kids are coming. If not, um, my fiance is, well, I guess at, the, uh, at that point we'll be married. So my, yeah. my, my then wife, uh, but, um, the the at least the three of us will go me and the two kids if not all four of us will go on sunday together um and uh, uh I, that's to, for me the highlight of the whole con is being able to go with my my kid uh, and now soon kids because that's just like a cool experience to have that shared interest um and he's still very much like he wants to try like when we the first thing we did on sunday was um i think the first thing we did so i wanted to check out there was a a a morning panel that was like modifying uh role-playing games for kids like dming for kids or something like that um and like 
we got off to a late start. So we got there and I think we, we got to the front door of that panel room 20 minutes into it. I peeked in the window and they were just like, they were into their thing. It was a packed room. I didn't want to disturb anybody. So I just, we just decided to go somewhere else, uh, which I think we went to learn and play. And we played this game from KTBG that was called uh, Food Fight. And it was a really neat game. We had fun playing it. Um, they were they were set up for like getting ready for a tournament. Um, we didn't stay for the tournament, but it was definitely like more of a. My son's seven; he'll be eight as as of this recording in a couple weeks. In a week, um, it was definitely not for like it was definitely like a, a three to five year old game. Um, okay, I think, it, I think it's fun for like a seven or eight year old, but like once or twice like and and maybe every time you get an expansion it's fun again but other than that like it's not for i think eight-year-olds or anything like that but what we did do is we went up to the show floor and i don't i I don't think you were here yet like you guys like you guys got there like afternoon i think well i yeah they my family got there before i did oh okay i'm not sure what time and and then i got there afternoon yeah yeah and it was like last year so so here's the one thing i did not like this year is the learn and play area i liked what they did last year where it was like a bunch of different people set up showing off their games it i guess it was kind of better this year in the sense that it was more structured um and i and and again it would have been it would have been nice to sit down and do the kid role-playing game that they had but it seemed like again another two-hour commitment that I just wasn't ready to do, especially with your, the panel that you guys were doing. Like it was, right. it was going to be cutting it way too close. Um, so we didn't. So we went to the learn and play area. We didn't really stick around long there because it wasn't like it was last year or the year before where you could just play like a bunch of different games. So we went up to actually go to the KTBG booth and we demoed uh, Haunt the House there and that was a great game um so much so is that's the game he decided to buy and and we've played it at home once or twice already nice nice it's it's a fun game it's a cool game it's a game that makes you think like he's at the level where like it's just above him for like oh how do i like bluff my bluff my way through this um so he like he needs to learn that skill but other than that like it, it seems like a fun game that you can sit down and play with like all the, the the whole family um and we played the two of us my daughter hopped in but like she hopped in while we were when we were almost done and um it is it's a little bit more advanced for a five-year-old but you know i think the more times a five-year-old plays it you know the easily catch uh, get the hang of it <coughs> um and then, but after we, we, I think we bought that after we went to the game library, we went to the game library, which is always neat to go with him because like, Oh, let me try this, this, and this. And we, I don't know, we, we, we tried some stinkers this year. I forget what they were called, which is probably for the best. I don't want to blast them. It wasn't, it wasn't their fault. They were stinkers. It was just like, not for us. Um, but that's when uh we met we we were sitting down playing games when we, when we saw you yeah i i well i so my sunday at pax is always i do church first uh because i'm a priest so i had to do church i had to work and then i run to pax because both the last two years i've had a sunday panel so uh i again talk about whirlwind i just remember showing up and then going to do the panel. I don't think I did anything else before that. I guess we, I met up with my kids. They were in classic cardboard. Uh, two of our good friends, Brian and Jamie, who are part of Saturday Night Strategist and members of my congregation. Um, by the way, there was a bunch of members of my congregation at PAX this year. But they uh, they like hung out with our kids um, and with their daughter. And we went and did the panel. And then, yeah, we went and did our our panel. So should we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about that to kind of wrap up this episode. And and the first thing I want to say is because you alluded to it as well. Um, and I'm going to actually lump in last year's panel too because, uh, and it's weird because I now I haven't run a panel at uh, Keystone, so I, I I've been I've sat in a few panels for Keystone, but I've never actually done one. So and, and remember, Read Pop uh, does both Packs Unplugged and Keystone. It right. even seems like. 
I don't think I've seen a setup as nice as PAX Unplugged. And that even goes for last year's room. Like yeah. the room you guys were in last year was about the size. That it was maybe a, maybe a little smaller than what I normally do for Wizard World. Um, but it was, it was the tech, the technical specs for it were great. They, they allowed you to easily plug into it. Um, and then this year, I mean, God, that Mothman theater, that was, yeah, it was insane. That was insane. How, I mean, it was, it's the kind of theater that like when for, for anyone that goes to wizard world or even Keystone, it, I mean, it's, it's. See, I don't know what the main theater looks like this year because normally at Wizard World, the main theater is in that like main grand hall area. And there's a big ass room that like Stephen Amell and and the cast of Drew Blood go to. But really, realistically, even the Mothman studio, that's more like let's say that's where if if you're at Wizard World, that's where like uh that's where the cast of boy meets world goes right uh, you know it, you know probably not going to be as big as steven ml or true blood or one of the comic book properties but definitely going to have a lot of people attending and that's that's what that mothman theater was 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 like the the like i mean the only thing bigger was the main theater i imagine so yeah, that was the only uh, one bigger yep so and it was the, my only disappointing thing with that whole setup is that they didn't necessarily make it easy for the panelists to get their audio. Right. Uh, I find it hard to believe that they couldn't accommodate. And and, I mean, I get it. Like they had all their connections used, but like, if I mean, you know, people are going to want to record their stuff. So like, how do you not have an extra space, an extra out to plug in something so that somebody can record it? Um, Being able to get it afterwards was a, a, was a, I mean, it didn't happen. <laughs> that's how, that's how much of a chore it was. It, it right. did not happen. Um, <clears throat> and, and then that was the time that the only, my only like, Oh wow, this is, this was a shitty PAX moment was when I went back there to try to get the audio, the person helping me, she was fantastic. Um, and I, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't assume gender, but, um, uh, they were fantastic. The guy who I will assume gender on, <laughs> was he was a the guy that was back there was a prick like he and, and this is jumping the gun to after your panel the yeah, panel was yeah. done um now granted i get it like my my kid is getting antsy because like we're standing there waiting and he went to go look to see if you guys were still out there and like he accidentally left the curtain ajar and the, like i could just see the dude shaking his head and like saying shit under his breath and that really left a sour taste in my mouth oh yeah i'm and, sure and, and that's why like the lady asked me and or the person asked me if i wanted to um wait like the 20 minutes it was going to take for it to process and compress and whatnot and i was just like now nah, i'm gonna i'm gonna go and i and then yeah. i gave you the memory card so that you could go get it <clears throat> um Right. But uh, uh, but I, the audio that I pulled from the recording sounds good that I that I sent to you guys. So right. I, which I'm know, sure everyone's heard by now. So <laughs> probably, you know, it, it's been it's been almost a year uh, as far as when people are starting to listen to this episode. It's been right. like probably, it's been like six months. So I hope so. So let me but, just say um, it this way. Go go to the uh, pot of love feed and look for the um, panel uh you know episode <laughs> it's probably yeah, in yeah, there okay. <laughs> um well and, and 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 hopefully i remember to link it in the show notes but the there panel itself was great i mean it, it, it consisted of and i i still am unclear of who set this up is that because so, somebody made it sound like all of you had a hand in creating this panel um but it was um, Heart Points, Zach and Diana from Z- the Heart Points podcast. It was you and Mel from Pot of Love. And then uh, I- I- I'm a horrible, horrible person because I forget Mackenzie, maybe. Yeah, Mackenzie. Yep, you got it. Yep. Nailed it. Forget um, I forget her, her partner's name and I forget the podcast name. It's, uh, uh, so it's Mackenzie and Dennis and they're the co-hosts of uh, One on One, a D&D duet campaign. Right, right, and so it was. It was you guys uh, talking about uh, 
duet podcasting with your significant other right uh and as as the uh, so I'll, I'll i'll say my piece as the that's as good the i was hoping you viewer. would because yeah i want to hear uh, your piece it was fantastic it was it was really cool i know that the like the people that were sitting next to me um they it was uh it was it was a, a lady with her like elderly father um like it was probably uh, someone that was the the, the the lady was probably like 10, 15 years my senior uh, with her even older father, obviously. But like they were there so that, like he could try to figure out how to play games with his wife, um, her mom. And so that was like really sweet and cute. And and um, but like the whole like seeing that's why people were there. Like I was there to support you guys um, and certainly, I mean, learn a thing or two about duet pod uh, uh role playing but not necessarily with my 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 general never ever <laughs> ever <laughs> play a role playing game with me but um i what i think and and from that angle as someone who knows that like really realistically i will probably never get jen to sit down and play um a role playing game with me uh it, i think i thought it was also very informative informative for just like an adult who doesn't have a lot of time to sit down and play a role playing game with a friend or two. Like it was very, very informative, even for the, 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 like not for the purpose of what you guys were doing, which was for significant others. I think it yeah, was informative it definitely even that bled. Way. Yeah. It definitely bled over into just two player RPGs in general, I think. Yes. Yes. Uh, and it was, and it was great. And it seemed like it was a packed house. Like I, I didn't yeah. really like look behind me to see if every seat was filled, but it seemed like a lot. Like, same thing with the panel last year. There was a line, waiting for you guys to, to to come watch you guys do the panel so it as, as someone watching it, it was really good it was really informative um and, and entertaining you know it, all all five of you and, and the picture of dennis um it was fantastic <laughs> yeah it was a lot of fun doing it um i think i was the one that had the least amount of like shock um because i had when was, was already in mothman i was the only one who was in mothman theater before our panel, like two days yes. before I had mentally prepared myself for what it was. I knew it was this massive theater with a huge screen that was going to be showing us the whole time and monitors um, where we could see ourselves and, you know, hear ourselves and all that stuff. Like I knew all of that was going to be the case and it was the biggest room I'd ever played in, you know, at, you know, in my whole life. Um, so I knew that going into it. So it was kind of funny because everybody else, Mel, Zach and Diane and Mackenzie, they were so beforehand. They were so like, like anxious and shocked and like just out, like overwhelmed by the scale of what we were about to do. And we, I had made this joke starting on Friday and we kept making like how they had made such a grave mistake putting us in yeah. there and like all this stuff. But you know what? I'll tell you, I, I would chalk all of that up to um, the subject matter. Right. Pa Pax rightly knew there was a big audience for the subject matter of playing role playing games with your significant other. Right. And, and, and there I, was. And and to to expand on that, I, I think that they have a better handle on on somehow and, and they must have people from Penny Arcade or something helping them with this. I I've never seen I, that that has the the, the most organized um convention to put on panels like it doesn't seem like i don't see rooms filled like that room like the room last year i don't see lines like that unless it's at wizard world or keystone unless it's for like the cast of the office Stephen amell or or whoever like for their big time people that's the only time i see lines every other panel is is your luck i mean I, i've i usually get 70 people which i think which is a lot um, right and it's a room for about 150 probably. Um, so it's always about half filled, maybe, maybe three quarters of the way filled. So maybe it is more than 75, but um, the, the, the independent content creators that are putting on panels they're I'd, I've never seen at wizard world or Keystone them filled like this place is. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. So it definitely feels wild to be, to, to like, feel like you're a nobody like me and like you know if you have all these people who came to hear you speak but we had a lot of fun and uh it was a really great panel and i'm really grateful for so the original concept came from zach and so i'm grateful for 
I guess I don't know if it was just Zach or both Zach and Diana, but I'm grateful for them for floating the idea. And uh, hopefully we'll come up with some creative ideas for next year. Uh, we did submit – all parts of the network submitted other panel ideas, that none of which got picked up. Um, but, you know, there's always next year. Right, right. So, and yeah, I, I think I submitted one thing that didn't get picked up, but I, which I get. Like, it wasn't really. I, I now and and I now that I've been there for like paying attention to the panels for the last two years, I kind of see what they're going for, and and I've always submitted something that they're not going for. I right. I submit the Wizard World, and and even Keystone doesn't necessarily go for that stuff. But um, I think I've I've actually like my 2020 goal is um, for Pax Unplugged. Besides doing what I always do, I, is I want to maybe not so much put on a panel, though I might have an idea for one. But I want to moderate. Like I just want, like I would love to just moderate somebody's panel. Like sure. that my that's that's what I want to do. I feel like that's probably what I'm best suited for because gotcha. I'm not necessarily in the world of um, tabletop. Um, aside from being a fan of it, uh, so I think I play that. I think I could play the role of moderator asking questions real well because that's kind of what i want to do anyway so uh so that's my goal is to hopefully be like i want to try to like squeeze my way into somebody's panel as a moderator gotcha yeah i already have a idea for a panel for next year that we haven't submitted yet and i've talked to a couple people who um may be involved in that so we'll see we'll see uh, but yeah, no, so I'm, I'm super excited for PAX and actually PAX Unplugged 2020 may be like, I'm, I'm doing less panel. I'm definitely like, I'm not going to the great Philadelphia comic con in 2020 because it's like the same, it's like the weekend before or after, uh, the wedding. So I won't be, I won't be there for that. Um, I might go to wizard world. Um, it's, it's the one pan, it's the one place I know that I can put on a panel. Uh, so it's hard to pass that up, but uh i i don't know pax unplugged is will be the one definite convention i go to this year um if i cut down it won't be that one wow it's a big deal um but on that note like i have to pee really bad we've <laughs> gone 25 minutes over what That's i right. thought we would do i i thought we would be lucky to get 45 minutes if i'm being honest yeah right Unplugged. Little, what do I know? Um, but I think we're going to try to record at least one more episode of Everything Is Awesome. So uh, we'll, we'll discuss that off air. No one needs to know our our behind the curtain. <laughs> um, but so uh, before we go, uh, Ben, please like give some people uh, your plugs so that they know where to get you. Oh sure, you can. Uh, I guess the best way to find me is go on Twitter. Um, I'm at Benjamin Wallace, and then um, you can find me at at pot of love also on twitter um and you can go to allportsopen.com and find a bunch find a bunch of the stuff that i do there too and, and make sure you give a listen to pot of love i'm sure i will um I talk about it in my outro that i will be recording um later sure, but, sure, sure. uh go listen to pot of love uh it is um uh, in its I guess, you know, second season is what you're calling it. Uh, yeah. And I really like what you're doing where, where it's still, you know, a, a duet podcast, but it's a long, long form storytelling now with like a, a whole season structure of, of uh, storytelling. I guess you did that the first season too, but I think I, I feel like yeah, kind of you fell into that. Whereas this is yes. like season two is like, all. Oh, I'm so excited to, to see what happens with season two here. Um, thanks and, i'm excited about it too so check out that check that out at uh, all ports open and uh you know i'm gonna throw it to me in the super future uh to kind of wrap this thing up so uh again thanks ben yeah thank you thanks ben from the pot of love podcast for being on the show uh what a great conversation that was um and just kind of reliving the the pax unplugged experience each year that PAX has been here in Philadelphia, it has uh, improved greatly. My, my, as I said in this episode, my first year with it, I, I was not a huge fan. Um, but but so, the, the 2018, I had a little bit more fun. And, and 2019 was uh, such a great year. And what's, what's really kind of disappointing is, is I was looking forward to 2020. I think 2020 was the year that the, the, my family, all four of us, were going to go on Kids Day on Sunday. Um, and, and who knows if PAX, uh, 2020 is going to even happen this year, uh, with everything going on with this COVID-19 business. Um, I hope they, I hope something can be worked out, but I honestly don't know if 
uh, I plan on doing anything festival wise and convention wise this year. Um, I, I'm really have to think about it um, because it all depends, you know, as, as things seem to be improving and you know what, who knows if they're even improving, things are just starting to open again. Um, as, as we get back to some semblance of normalcy or whatever the new normal is, um, I, I don't know that I'm going to trust big conventions and festivals like that um, so soon, especially if, you know, I, as we're preparing to open, I'm, I personally am also preparing for a, a big second wave of, of COVID-19 stuff. So um, and as we all should. And, and I think as we have at the top of the show, we need to remember to, to do the basics uh, of washing our hands and, and not touching our face. And, as, you know, as, as much as. You know, I think I've cut back on it and, you know, I still do it from time to time. But um, anyway, uh, let's not end on that sour note. Pax Unplugged was awesome. And I'm sure that we'll find ways to celebrate the tabletop um, community uh, here in Philadelphia, even if we can't do it through Pax Unplugged in, in the real life. IRL, as the kids say. Uh, that being said, we like to end everything as awesome with a call to action. Super friends. There are a lot of terrible things happening in the world right now. Um, and, and we're in, in the biggest um, terrible thing, I think, of our lifetimes. Um, it ranks up there with 9-11, that's for sure. Uh, and, and, um, and, and I'm sure there are people that have been affected way more by 9-11 than by this, and vice versa. And, and one pandemic uh, is, is no worse or terrible than uh, the travesties, uh, travesties of 9-11. Um, they're, they're equally bad, but I don't think uh, I've seen anything this terrible s- since 9-11. Uh, and you know what? Uh, it's a voting year. It's an election year. Uh, the, it probably could have been handled better, uh, you know, if, 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 if you ask me. Um, and you know, we need to make sure we get out there and vote. I just got in, in the mail the other day, my mail-in ballot for the election this year. Uh, if you have time, uh, and by, for the election, I mean the Pennsylvania primaries that are happening. They were moved from, uh, from April to June 2nd. Um, if you live in a state where you haven't uh, voted yet or they delayed your vote and you have time to register to vote by mail, please, please do so because that is an important right you have, uh, hopefully, so that you can make sure that you can vote safely. Um, we, I, I and, and no one that's sane wants you to miss out on voting uh, by mail um, because uh, you're afraid to go out. Um, you should not let the, the, the fear of, of what's going on right now should not prevent you from being able to vote. So, uh, make sure you register to vote, make sure you register to vote. That's very important. Make sure you're able to, uh, if, if your state allows, uh, to vote by mail and Hey, you know what? If, uh, your state doesn't allow you to vote by mail, maybe you should call your representatives to make that happen. Uh, you can call your representatives uh, it's the easiest way to get involved. Uh, and when I call my reps, I use a site called fivecalls.org. That's the number five calls.org. There, you'll find summaries for issues that are important to you, contact information for your representatives, and a easy to read script while you're on the phone to make sure you get your message across. Calling is quick, easy, and one of the most efficient and effective ways to have your voice heard. Uh, so, whether it's about mail-in votes or another issue you find uh, or you know of on, uh, you know, uh, fivecalls.org, you know, use that site to help you make those calls. Um, it's the easiest thing in the world. Uh, and have your voice heard uh, for important issues um, to you and your family and, and your community. Thank you to all our supporters on patreon.com slash that nerdy Kev and ko-fi.com slash that nerdy Kev. Without their support, we wouldn't be able to bring this awesome episode to you. If you want to support us in a non-monetary way, word of mouth recommendations and a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts is the best way to support us. And 
spread that good word of awesome. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Real Awesome Pod or on Instagram at Awesome Podcast. We're available on awesomepodcast.com or thatentertains.com slash network. Get news about everything is awesome from our website, social media accounts, or my personal Twitter at that nerdy kev. If you're interested in ad rates, live appearances, help with your podcast, or have a question or comment, email us at awesome at crudehumorstudios.com. Everything is Awesome is a production of That's Entertainment Podcast Network in association with Crude Humor Studios. Crude Humor Studios is a Philadelphia-based production company specializing in audio, video, and live performances. You can find more information at crudehumorstudios.com. Thanks for listening, super friends. We've been awesome. This episode of Everything is Awesome is brought to you by Tellist. Tellus is a fantasy world created by Michael D'Angelo. Spanning 15 novels and novellas, Tellus is a place of magic and splendor, where great heroes fight for the people. Some of these heroes are blessed with the strain, granting them uncanny abilities. The Tellus universe is medieval superhero fantasy with steampunk elements that mix with several different mythologies. With so much to choose from, the world is in your hands. Get more information, purchase the books, and discover the world of Tellus at Tellus.com. Entertainment and culture. Artist owned, fan supported.